What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Homeboat Workshop. Today, we're gonna do something that I have never done before. That's right. We're going to build a picture frame, but we're gonna use finger joints for the corners. This makes for a ridiculously strong frame. Excellent for mirrors or super large frames that you need to make, except we're gonna make this little tiny one. Stick around, check it out. Now, I don't know about you guys, but around my house, it seems like I always have a need for yet another picture frame. This could be to hang up anything from the latest school picture, or the most recent awesome piece of artwork, or any other sort of poster, music-related item, or anything. In this case, I want to build a small frame for this little piece of marketing materials. This is for Haley Guitars. I want to have a nice way to hang it up, put it on display. Now, I have done other frame videos in the past. I'm going to put links in the description to a few of those if you want to check some some of those out as well. I wanted to try something different for this project, so I thought we would do the corners with finger joints instead of miring or anything like that. Should be kind of fun. Since I'm building a very small frame, I don't need a lot of material. Looking through my pile of offcuts, I've got these few small pieces of elm. I think these are going to work perfect. These are leftovers from the elm table that I made recently. I originally wanted to use barn wood, but I thought since we're cutting these into thin finger joints, I didn't want to risk the softer barn wood breaking, so I thought using a hardwood would probably be a better idea. My first step for this project is going to be to rip these strips down to an inch and a quarter on the table saw. Then on the crosscut sled, I'm going to cut them down to length. I'm leaving them just a teensy bit long. So I've got my frame pieces all laid out. Before we make any cuts, I want to just make a couple of marks on here so that I can keep the corners together. Once we start cutting, it's going to be important that we always keep these two sides together, these two, these two, and so on. I'm making a mark on the top. I want to make sure I am always referencing this top face. Now I'm going to remove the combination blade from my table saw and install a rip specific blade. The reason I'm using this blade to cut the finger joints is because the teeth have a nice square profile. You don't get that V shape like you do with a combination blade. And now I'll install the finger joint jig onto my crosscut sled. I have a spacer made up that sets the jig at precisely the right distance from the blade. And now it's time for a test cut. I've cut a couple pieces of scrap the same size as the frame is going to be. And here is where it's important to know the face of each piece. When you're making these cuts, the face is always going to point toward the blade. And our test pieces look really good. I don't think I need to make any adjustments at all. But if your joints are too loose and you need to make any adjustments, you'd want to move your spacer away from the blade. You'd loosen up your clamps and very carefully tap this over just a teensy bit, like maybe the thickness of a piece of paper. Just to move that a tiny bit, that'll tighten up the joint. Then clamp it back down and do another test cut. Since I'm happy with the test cut, I just went ahead and started cutting all the finger joints for the pieces. If you guys are interested in seeing a little more in depth how to make and use a simple finger joint jig like this, I've got a video that I made a while back. I'll put a link in the video description. Oh. I think the worst part about doing finger joints is there's so much dust. Definitely you want to wear some sort of breathing protection. Make sure you stay safe. This does take a little bit of time and you don't want to be breathing all of this dust the whole time you're making these cuts, so respirator. And now we glue. Ah, spilling glue. I'm going to jump in here really quick before we get to the next clip and then you guys are going, wait, we missed a step in there. What happened? And that would be correct because somehow I missed 
the clip of me putting this thing together. Really, you didn't miss anything too important. Just shoving the joints together and adding the clamps. My camera's starting to act up, and once in a while it just shuts off. I think the sawdust is finally getting to it. I'm gonna have to have that checked out. We now return to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, we'll just let that dry for a little bit. As soon as the glue is dried, I use my oscillating sander to sand all the finger joints nice and flush. Then I'll drop a rabbiting bit in my router table. I'll route a small groove around the back edge. This will accept the artwork. Next, I'll swap that out for a 45 degree chamfer bit and run a small chamfer around the front edge towards the artwork. This is just a nice little detail. Now I'll measure an inch and a half in from each edge and make a small mark. These marks will indicate a start and stop point to run a chamfer around the outside edge. I don't want to chamfer the corners, otherwise I could damage the finger joints. But I want to add a small detail in between the finger joints. And since the rabbiting bit leaves rounded corners and we need square corners, now I just need to spend a few minutes with a nice sharp chisel and square up those inside corners. It is amazing how much difference a very sharp chisel makes. Even if it's not a super high quality chisel, this thing is hair popping sharp. It cuts like a dream. I also have just a little bit of cleanup work to do on the front face as well. Again, because the router bit leaves a rounded edge and I need a nice square edge. And now, we sand. This is just a little bit of softening the corners, breaking the edges just to make it feel nice in the hand before applying some finish. Shake well before using. And for the finish, we're going really simple, a few coats of spray-on polyurethane. This wasn't my first choice as I really wanted to use lacquer because it dries so much quicker, but for some reason, lacquer is sold out everywhere I go. It's crazy. Now I have no problem with polyurethane, I've used it for tons of projects. I really just didn't want to have to deal with the longer dry time of the polyurethane. While the poly is drying, I'm going to get my piece of glass cut down to size. Worst sound ever! And now, all we need to do is assemble this. Let's drop our glass in. Now we can drop in our artwork, which in my case is some Haley Guitars promotional material. Just some cool stuff that I want to have on display. I've just cut a piece of cardboard that I'll use as the backer. Now to hold everything in place, I'm going to use this pneumatic tap point gun. You can also get manual versions of these as well. These are made specifically for holding the tabs in on the back of frames. Now I know a lot of you may not have a tool like this and that is completely okay doesn't mean you can't do this project. Just use some finishing nails, tap them in at an angle. It's gonna hold everything in place just as good. But since I have it, this is what I'm gonna use. Just in case you guys are unsure what a tab point is, here's a few of them. These are just the little tabs. They have a point on the end and that's what gets shot into the side of the frame. They're made out of a flexible metal that you can bend to hold everything in place. These are found on the back of a lot of frames. And there we have it guys. Our finger joint frame is complete. I really like the look of this. It's very similar to a spline on a corner of a miter, but there's no spline. This method of construction is gonna make for a very, very strong frame. You will not have to reinforce these joints at all. With so much glue surface in there, there's no way this thing's gonna come apart. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Yet another take on making a simple picture frame. I'd like to explore different ways of creating the same thing. It gives you a lot of ideas to choose from when you're working on other projects. So don't feel like you have to build things one way just because that's kinda how a lot of people do it. There's a million ways to make things, and I encourage you to explore as many of them as you can. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Right there. Hey, like it.
tires. Look at that. <laughs> Do you guys notice what I forgot on this project? Any way to hang it. <laughs> I need to install a hanger. I don't even have any right now, so I'm gonna have to go buy some, but we're gonna refer to an old video and pretend that it went something like this. I like to use a little tack hammer and a pair of needle nose pliers, the pliers to hold the little nail. That way when you tap it, you're not hitting your finger because it's so small. Plus this doesn't hurt quite as bad when you do hit your finger because it is a little bit smaller. Now that's funny right there. I don't care who you are. The camera is worrying me. It shuts off just on a whim. Look at me. I look like I'm ready to go to Home Depot. <laughs> That's not funny, is it? I've seen people wearing these recently. <laughs> oh, I guess we should plug the saw back in. It doesn't turn on without it. It's like 88, 89 degrees in the shop. The worst part right now, it's 102 degrees outside. But at least it's a dry heat. 